we have in our company shifted and uh, Sven basically uh, won a solution for solve this problem. He will explain basically his approach to solve this problem and, and everything. And well, basically, thank you for coming. Thank you also for the shift who sponsor Meetup and provide us with the good food and drinks and all that stuff. And let's get started. Thank you. So uh, first, uh, I'm going to talk about what seeker manage management is. Uh, then I'm going to talk about some of the existing solutions before I go into the details of uh, Shipstead's internal uh, solution to the problem. Uh, so first, a few disclaimers. Uh, so the information given might be uh, inaccurate and uh, is not enough to create secure applications. Uh, also, you should uh, consult your lawyer when it comes to regulatory compliance. Okay, uh, so what is secret management? We're talking about secret management in the cloud setting. So uh, you have multiple applications uh, that need to get access uh, to things. And that might be um, a database or something. So uh, the first uh, type of secrets is, is um, you know, getting access to yeah, a database or, or other types of services. It might be an external API, API or something. And usually the solution for this is a IAM, uh, Identity and Access Management. Um, so that's, that's a very broad solution. And usually uh, if you're on uh, the Amazon Cloud, like we are at Chipster right now, then Amazon themselves has a really good solution to this problem. Uh, but uh, you might have also other needs. Uh, maybe you want to distribute your private certificates. Uh, then you might only need a public key infrastructure. Uh, then you might have information that is uh, regulated by the authorities. And you need um, uh, very special solutions to comply with that. And uh, often then you use some kind of hardware security module. Uh, but we're going to talk about the rest, the, the ones that doesn't fit in one of the previous categories. So it might be um, access to databases you don't control. It might be uh, encryption, encryption keys. It could be for uh, JSON web encryption. Um, and again, private certificates. It could be user data, it could be config. So it might not be strictly confidential. Uh, but but you, you, you might want to keep it secret. So uh, if you look at this in another way, um, secret management is somewhere between identity and access management and key management. So key management is only concerned about the cryptographic keys and managing that, those. Uh, and you might use a key management solution to create a secret management solution. Uh, and furthermore, you might use a secret management solution to create an identity and access management solution. So it's sort of this nested, um, um, like you, you, you make more and more uh, higher abstractions. So, um, so, so we have these secrets, tokens, um, database, key, uh, passwords, whatever. And we want the service owner um, to be able to deploy their services, and to manage their secrets in an easy way, while the attacker cannot um, interfere with, um, um, they, they cannot um, see the secrets, and they cannot alter the secrets, so that you um, uh, change into something else. So then we have secrecy and um, uh, integrity. Uh, okay, so there are quite a few players already doing this. Um, so the big one, obviously, is Microsoft, which has their own solution for their um, cloud called Azure. So, so Key Vault, we're going to look at in a uh, minute. Uh, HashiCorp is the other big player with their Vault. And then there's a host of uh, other uh, big names that's, that's doing some kind of solution to this problem. And uh, as we see, uh, as we shall see, there's um, there's like no no one fits all solution right now. So instead of um, 
picking a winner. Uh, we're going to look at some of the differences, and then hopefully you will be in a position to make your own choice uh, for what solution uh, bet, uh, best fits your needs. So uh, the landscape looks something like this. Um, so in the upper right corner, uh, so, so let, let me just do the axis first. Um, so on, in this quadrant, we have uh, secret. Uh, so secret management, not key management, uh, which is on the right. And then above the line here, we have online solutions. Yeah, you need to be um, you know, have network of some kind. And then offline, which you can do locally. Uh, so let's go through this. So both the, the big two I talked about, Azure's Key Vault and HashiCorp's Vault, they kind of have both, both key management and secret management. Uh, then there's uh, uh, quite a, uh, many solutions using um, Amazon's uh, key management service as the, um, uh, for, for key management, the crypto part, and then uh, they have some kind of enrichment on their own. Uh, so I'm going to go into the, the features of Strongbox in a bit. And then there's a host of, of uh, solutions from quite simple, um, like Redstash, to, to more um, uh, comprehensive, like, like Biscuit. Okay, so uh, there's also some um, specialized uh, key management uh, services, well, sorry, uh, secret management solutions for for um, uh, for uh, container uh, running containers, so you have one for Kubernetes, you have OpenStack, and also for Marathon. And then there's uh, uh, two other solutions uh, called Nox and Kivis, and they are uh, much like the ones over here, but they don't depend on ABS KMS to to work. Okay, so there, there's also a couple of uh, other solutions which are quite um, well, they're a little bit different, and they can use PGP as the backend, and, and not only uh, KMS. And then just for reference, if you would have uh, password managers, like for you know, uh, your Google account or whatever, then you would, could use something like 1Password and LastPass, and they would fit over here in the, in the figure. So, um, if you're on Azure, uh, you should definitely check out Microsoft's Key Vault. Uh, it's quite a comprehensive solution. Uh, when it comes to HashiCorp Vault, um, Vault is uh, not only trying to tackle the secret management problem, but also the access management problem. So, um, giving access to your own databases with uh, refreshing um, the tokens, so you can have short short-lived tokens, so if somebody steals the token, you uh, know that it will only be valid for a very short time. So, so um, HashiCorp's Vault also tackle that, uh, that type of problem. Um, for some of the others, like, like CredStash, uh, it's, it's very simple, so the features you can expect is, is very narrow. Um, while others, um, have, have more features, but they, they might also be hard to set up and maintain. So I'm going to get back to that later when we talk about um, Strongbox, which is um, the solution I've been working on for, for the past uh, five months. Um, the uh, goal here has been to create something that is as good or better than all of the solutions we just looked at, and a few more. Uh, we're not quite there yet. It's in alpha um, testing internally. There's a few teams trying it, uh, trying it out. And uh, we, we might open source it at some point. We'll see. Um, but we, we wanted to show you guys uh, what we are working on uh, before it's oh, quite done. So let's see at the, look at the, the features. So we want it to be easier to use. Um, so it's serverless. Uh, okay, so first of all, this is only on uh, Amazon right now. So it's serverless in the sense that you will install it typically, typically using Homebrew, for instance, and that, then you get the command line. I'm going to do a demo in a bit, and then um, 
you're just ready to go. Like there's no configuration, there's no service to run. Uh, and uh, it works with having multiple teams and uh, multiple accounts, uh, which is the case of Shipstead. Uh, so there's a GUI and a CLI that you can manage the secrets with. And there's a SDK for doing um, integrations. So it could be simple stuff like re reading secrets or creating more advanced solutions. And then we also have an air case integration. Uh, at Chipster, we're using a lot of Netflix tools, um, such as Spinnaker and Eureka, and, and also our case. So we wanted to have an our case integration. Um, so we wanted the security model to be as good or better as the, the existing ones. So most of the solutions only encrypt the secret, but we also wanted to encrypt, encrypt the metadata, um, well, at least some of the metadata um, uh, that relates to the secret, so that um, that's not visible. And we do that by encrypting it and also use padding. Uh, so padding is just to uh, not uh, being able to see um, uh, get any information from the encrypted blob by looking at the length of the blob. Um, yeah, and, and we also wanted the, there to be no configuration. So, so you just use the defaults and, and you're good. Uh, so we have quite a lot of features. Um, these ones uh, seem fairly basic, but you'd be surprised how few of the solutions are just shown that has all of these. Uh, so we have versioning. So you can have different versions of the, the secrets. Um, you can uh, set uh, uh, like states. This is uh, enabled or, or um, disabled or compromised. Uh, you, you have not before, not after to indicate uh, what period of the time this uh, thing should be uh, accessed. And we support both having DynamoDB and local files as the backend, as well as um, um, letting the user have uh, their own data in, in, in a field. Okay, so in some sense, this um, uh, so we, we want to be, create a really good solution, but this is also a learning experience for us, so that we um, can know uh, what to look for in in um, uh, all the secrets managers uh, to ma be able to uh, make uh, good decisions. And by owning the solution, we also have full freedom to integrate with whatever solutions we want. Okay, so uh, this is the components. We have the SDK, uh, which is used by both the CLI and the GUI, and uh, the RKS integration. And while it's not done, we also have an experimental native client for, for Node.js. Okay, so the basic layout is like this. Uh, so you have the secret group manager that um, managers uh, the secret groups, um, and the secret group is just a logical collection of secrets. So it's usually either your team's secrets or maybe um, a given service's secrets. So um, that's how you control access. So the services have access to a single secret group, and, and uh, that secret group also have the resources, which are managed by you, uh, so the user doesn't have to think about them. Okay, so let's look at how this is in practice. Uh, so this is our experimental GUI. We, it was written in a in a day, so it's it's a bit crude. Um, so uh, now I'm going to create a secrets group. Uh, I'm just going to call it Team Dot Projects. And we want this to be as smooth as possible and integrate with the uh, ABS. Um, tools, so it's suggesting EU West 1 because that is my default region uh, for my AVS CLI. So now it's going to allocate all the resources in AVS. And um, uh, now we have our group. Okay, so let's create a secret in this group. I'm just going to call it my secret. And we have three options. We can either enter a value. So this might be your GitHub token or Dialog token or whatever. 
uh, you can uh, generate one uh, random by using KMS. So KMS can generate up to 1,024 bytes of, of data. Then you, um, you say how many bytes you want. Or you can select a file. So this might be useful if you have uh, like a, um, uh, a private certificate or something and you, you want to store that as the, the secrets. So then we have the state, which is either enabled, disabled, or later you can set it to compromised to indicate that this, this key was leaked. And then maybe I want to have uh, 1st of October this year and 1st of uh, November next year as, as the window it can be used. And we op uh, have the option to, to add a comment here to maybe you know, describe why we're creating a new secret or, or something. Okay, so then we, we have our secret. We have one version and we have the data and just like in one password, you have to actually say that I want to look at it and then it decrypts. So it's encrypted until you, you, you want to show it. Um, so the versioning is uh, append only right now. Uh, so if we want to have new versions, we, we, we can append that. Uh, but we cannot delete versions, we can only delete um, the whole secrets or the group. Okay, so this is how you would create secrets and uh, to give access to your uh, nodes in, in uh, production uh, or testing, whatever, you, you would um, attach a policy. So in Amazon you have usually a role or something associated with your nodes. Uh, so, so now we're gonna uh, assume that our nodes is, is in the uh, secret manager test role. And here it gives me, um, it provides uh, completion of actual roles in, in this account of, of Amazon. Um, let's see. And I want to add it as read only. So now the secret manager test role has access to read my secrets. Uh, and the same for, for admin if you want that. Okay, so um, just one more feature I'm gonna show in the, the GUI, which is the, the backup. So um, we're gonna backup this secret group to, to file, and that's gonna serialize it to a file on disk. So, Right now the secrets are in DynamoDB, but it can also be in a disk. And it's gonna be encrypted, so you can check it into Git or whatever. Um, so we do that. Then just to show you, I can do a restore on the, on the file I just created. And this is only restoring the, the state, so, so not, not the whole secret group, only uh, the secrets, and, and we're back. Uh, so if you want to read this from your application, uh, you would add something like this to your code. So again, we have our SQL group manager, and we, uh, this thing is just gonna pick up the default credentials in Amazon. You can override that just like any other uh, AVS SDK. And then we do a get on the secret group. So we're in EU West one, and it's called team project. Then we get our secrets uh, group. And from that, we can, for instance, get latest active version, um, which is uh, only gonna retrieve the secrets if it's inside the, the not before, not after window we, we set. Uh, and then you can get the actual secret value. We also have some metadata here. Okay. So um, let's uh, take a closer look on, at um, the architecture. Uh, so we have the secret group manager, um, and when you create a new group, it's gonna create a secrets group and allocate the resources. So we have a store, which might be either DynamoDB or a file. Uh, we have an encryptor, which right now can only be AVS KMS. But in theory, it could be uh, other things as well, such as uh, HashiCorp's Vault Transit. Um, but uh, the one thing that's that's tightly coupled to, to AVS right now is the IAM policy um, management. Um, 
Uh, so we create two roles, the admin role and the read-only role. And we create these so that the user don't have to worry about uh, configuring them correctly. So they only need to attach to those roles, just like any other role in, in Amazon. Okay, so we uh, have some work to do. We, we want to finish the, the beta, get more teams to try it internally. Uh, we want to improve the auditing. Right now we only get auditing through uh, AVS's uh, CloudTrail. And um, we don't have any tooling to make it easier to look through those logs. And we also want to support more languages. So we, we've done some experimentation, uh, experimentation with Node.js, but um, uh, we use more languages in Shipstead, so we want better support for those. Uh, we uh, wanted to make it cloud agnostic, but uh, right now, uh, before we have a cloud agnostic and access, man access management solution, uh, doing that is, is difficult. Um, so, a, a couple of notes on, on the underlying encryption. So, we use the AVS encryption SDK uh, to not having to handle the crypto ourselves. So, um, this figure is a simplified version of that. But uh, what essentially happens uh, in envelope encryption is that um, you, I instead of um, just having one encryption key and encrypting your data with that, you uh, ask for, uh, like every time you have a new secret, you're asking for a new encryption key. That's called a key encryption key. Um, Sorry, sorry. So the, in AVS KMS, you have a key encryption key. And that is, is what's used for um, um, encrypting the data encryption key, which you get one for each um, entry in, in uh, like for one, one for each secret. So, so you, you ask for the data encryption key, and then you get the pair back from uh, KMS. Um, you get the data encryption key encrypted and unencrypted. And then you use the unencrypted version to encrypt uh, your plain text, which is, in our case, both the secret and the metadata we want to store together with the uh, secret. Um, you encrypt that using the advanced encryption standard with the Gola account mode, um, and you end up with the ciphertext. And you store the ciphertext along with the encrypted uh, that encryption key and some metadata. And there's also some uh, signature of the whole thing here to, to make sure that the integrity is, is uh, 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 can be verified when you, you read it back later. Okay, so because of this two layered uh, encryption, so, so you have both the key encryption key and the data encryption key, uh, and you have your own secrets. So if your secret, your GitHub token or whatever is, is compromised, you need to uh, rotate that, that uh, independently, then you will create a new secret entry in, in um, Strongbox. Uh, but if you think uh, Amazon's key management service is compromised, you uh, would uh, rotate that independently. And then you need to re-encrypt all of your stored secrets. Um, so, yeah, that, that's how it works when you do this two-layered um, envelope encryption. Okay, so um, to, to summarize, uh, when uh, you're looking for a, a secret management solution, uh, you should uh, look at how easy it is to integrate. So some of the solution, uh, solutions require you to actually write code before you can start using them. So there's one like... Uh, you have to write Go code uh, to implement uh, authentication before you can start using it. So that um, uh, um, makes it you know, more expensive to start using it. Um, some of them also only allow you to have a single uh, access level, so across all your keys. That might not work if you, you know, have multiple services and multiple teams. Uh, there's also 
the maintenance cost of having to run us um, run the service to to um, be able to provide uh, secret management, and there's also the security model. So, if you're going to expose all of your secrets in in the company, like in, have them in one basket, so if the attacker gets access to that basket, they will have everything. Or if you can compartmentalize it, um, having multiple accounts or or other techniques. Uh, there's also this. Uh, notion of uh, encrypting only the secret or the secret and the the metadata. So depending on your needs, that might be a thing. And also this having to configure it correctly. So in Amazon, there's three uh, major ways of of uh, doing um, uh, of, of uh, uh, securing access to an instance and. Um, uh, we, we chose to only do one of them and auto-generate it so that the user don't have to think about it, while some of the other solutions uh, leave it up to the end user to choose one. And you know, depending on your users, you might not uh, want to expose them to that. Uh, there's also history and auditing, so versioning of files, being able to comment if there's anything uh, wrong with the um, uh, like if they're compromised or uh, you want some extra information uh, attached to the, the secret. And, uh, and also auditing and uh, being able to look at the logs, maybe have anomaly detection in terms of uh, somebody trying to steal all your, all your secrets. Uh, and then there's availability. Uh, if, if this thing has a single point of failure or if you can scale um, to a lot of traffic. And in our case, um, because we use, uh, have this serverless architecture in Amazon, it's going to scale to whatever KMS and DynamoDB can scale to. Okay, questions? Yep. So the question is if you in, in Strongbox can share a secret between accounts. And uh, the answer is yes. And the way it works is that you would use uh, assume uh, cross account assume roles. So, so you would assume into the role that has the secrets and you can get access that way. Other questions? So right now there's uh, nothing built in to do that, uh, but um, uh, you, you do have when it was created and when it was modified. And by using CloudTrail you can see when it was accessed and who accessed it. Um, and you also have the, the user data I talked about, so if you want to extend this to, to manage passwords for, for your company, then uh, you could put that in the user data field. And you manage uh, that this was used with uh, a certain type of policy. Uh, so I don't know if did that answer your question. No. 
Uh, other questions? Oh? The, the access, the, the access to the secret, what can you know about when the secret is accessible? Because the, you, for instance, have this in a file, and then you have to put this in a file. Yep. So it has to, it, it, it to be the SDK controls, <coughs> or because you have to, it's in a file, we read all the whole file, and only, only to access one single secret. Yep. Something like this, so it's being serverless, and uh, more or more yes. technology is being serverless in, in the SDK. Yes, yes. So so, so uh, but um, um, you still can't, so the the file the local file is going to be encrypted with KMS, uh, so you still have to go online to actually decrypt the file. Yeah, but so, the whole file so or? yeah, so it's actually two stages. So uh, first you have to open the file, um, and that's one uh, decryption, and then then you get access to all of the metadata, and then you have to individually um, decrypt. Uh, the secrets you want of that. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, the, the SDK is who uh, will, at some point, modify the, the access data. Mm -hmm. the access, uh, I mean, can be hijacked. I mean, yeah. Or in the <coughs> so, so um, um, there's, uh, because it's uh, encrypted, um, uh, even some of the metadata, so you can check the integrity of the file that it hasn't been changed. Uh, so if your your client is read only, uh, they can't really um, uh, change the data. But any admin uh, service is going to be able to manipulate the metadata in a way that you can't discover. <coughs> Other questions? So, so uh, what we actually did is uh, we created um, uh, a key value interface. So just like the link for, for Microsoft, you have this uh, high level DSL to, to access key value stores. So uh, what you need to do is just implement uh, the interface for this, this key value store uh, in whatever uh, uh, provider you have. So it's kind of neat and we, we might open source that project as a separate thing. Yeah, uh, as, as I uh, briefly mentioned earlier, um, uh, the, the goal there is not to create a different project. So, so uh, I mean, it's, we, we will still um, try it out. It's in alpha. And uh, personally, I have no problem uh, doing a different project uh, if that turns out to be a better solution. So, so it's, it's back to the, it's, this is a, uh, we get a very deep understanding of the problem by doing it this way. And if the solution is better, and, and right now I think we have some interesting improvements, uh, then it makes sense to, to do our own. But yes, it's, it's uh, of course already been a, uh, quite an investment. So. <laughs> so, so it's, um, uh, of course, it, it's, it's a, a very common uh, problem, like most teams have this problem, and solving it in a good way uh, on a large scale is, is something that's uh, important to Shipstead. And, and that's, that's one of the benefits by working in a, in a big company is that you actually have time to, to look uh, closely at problems like this. Cannot. I don't know. It is 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have to look closely at this, but right now I think the way it works with KMS and uh, uh, envelope encryption I talked about, uh, it might not be possible to create a write-only role, actually. Uh, on Dynamo, maybe? Yeah, on Dynamo, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, sorry. So I, I um, you're uh, totally correct. So you could, of course, create a different policy for, for Dynamo. But in, in, um, in KMS, it's, uh, so, so uh, what, I like, uh, what I prefer is to have uh, both uh, the Dynamo uh, permissions and the encryption permissions <laughs> match. And, and the Dynamo is, is not, not a problem, but the KMS might be a problem in this case. So, but if you're happy with that, then of course it's it's fine. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> Sorry. Do you have plans to make it open source? Uh, I think so. So, if it uh, uh, turns out how we uh, would like, we're probably gonna uh, try to open source it. Uh, but if, of course, there, there's a lot of details there and stuff I haven't talked about, uh, which is uh, there's a lot of. Um, uh, tricky things. Uh, for instance, we use the JVM to, to do the secrets, and and um, mostly that's that's fine. It's it's very productive, but things like clearing out the memory is virtually impossible. So um, uh, there, there are still details uh, in, in implementation. We we want to, to look close that before we we do that. So, yeah. So, so, so the the uh, I guess the question then is like how how much all this stuff are you willing to uh, do to to make that happen uh, versus uh, just ease of use and ease of maintainability. So, um, more questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So guys, what happens when you don't have a proper secret management system in your company? What happens? Something like this. That at some point you will have a lot of secrets in your GitHub repos. Artifactory secrets user passwords from databases, applications, certificates, tokens, and that kind of things. And at the end, you have all of this in, in probably in a private uh, repo, but at some point you make it public, or you even push it to the GitHub, public GitHub at some point as well. And when you publish in a GitHub an Amazon credentials, or Amazon credentials, what happens? Basically, is that in two minutes, you have some guy mining bitcoins in your account. So uh, what I did to try to fix this, it's to create basically a, a library that it's called secret, I wrote this way. It's not cool. It's, it's like in German. I think that in German, secret is wrote this way. <laughs> and the idea of, of this library is basically to provide us some primitives uh, to evaluate if there are secrets in some sources. I mean, not only repositories, but whatever source. I mean, files, artifactory, repos, and uh, everything, I mean. So, the idea of secret is very simple. It's basically a library in which you have, um, it's wrote in Go, so it's, uh, it's wrote in Go. And basically, you have to create, a you can create a secret con context Lot, a set of rules that can be loaded from path, from dir, from file. Those rules are basically uh, very simple, are regular expressions, based on regular expressions. A little bit more complex because you have match and unmatch regular expressions. I, I will, you, we will see later. Also, I, we can load uh, objects. Right now, I support, the library support uh, two types of objects, directories, and git, git repositories. In directories, it, the secret will inspect all the files within the director. 
and with, uh, Git rep um, with the Git source, it will inspect all the commits. I mean, even if, if, not in, if the file is not in the last commit, so we're not visible in the, in the last commit, it will inspect in deep. And then, of course, I also support uh, exceptions, because it's not easy to find secrets using regular expressions. There are a lot of false positives, and it's very easy to have false positives. So I added the feature to uh, have uh, also exceptions. Okay. And then it's very easy. Basically, calling inspect, it will launch as many coroutines as you want. In this case, five coroutines. And you just have to wait. It's, uh, I think that it's the, the version I have published, it's uh, synchronous, but um, I'm working to do it asynchronous, so you can, you can do other things while it's making the inspection. Okay. And then you can collect the list of secrets using the list of secrets method. Rules. Okay, the rules. How are the rules defined? Very easy. It's basically you have uh, two, um, well, two sets of regular expressions. The first one is match, and the second one is a match. Okay. So if uh, a line in the object match with a line and doesn't match with any of those lines, it will be considered a secret. Okay. It's very simple. Very simple. And we will see some examples. Uh, exceptions. Okay. Of course, exceptions are um, something that it's uh, something we need, we had to address when you are doing that, because there is a lot of exceptions. I mean, it's something that you need to fine tune uh, in, in, in your own uh, in your own code when you want to use it. For instance, um, what you can do to indicate that someone is an exception, it's to, it's a YAML file as well, like the rules file. It's also a YAML file. Well, you can put all these uh, conditions. I mean, rule. Object, line, and content. Okay, rule is the line is the rule that matches that makes in this con with all the conditions. Object is the object that, ma that also matches with this condition. Line it's the line in which the secret is found, and content it's the content basically that match the secret. So uh, you don't have to use all of them. You can use only one of them. For instance, one line. If you indicate that in the file in the file, uh, in a specific file, the first line, it's not a secret. So even if he match with any rule, will not, uh, will not, um, will not trigger the, the alarm in this case. And, and of course, uh, if you have, for instance, a secret that you always use as an example, for example, for, I don't know, for, uh, this is a uh, password uh, equal, this is an example, or something like this. If you always use the same as an example, you can, put, you can create a rule or an exception with the content, with this content, and will never, will never, uh, be, it will never be marked as a, as a secret. Okay? Then, this is a library. What I show is a library, but you can use it in other, the library by itself, it's not very useful. So you need to do some integrations, or you need to create other tooling using this library. And one of the things I created is a Git secret. It's just still in barely, barely, very early mm, stage. I mean, it's something that it's, uh, there are some books already. I found one book this morning, for instance. I fixed it. But uh, it's version 0 .0 0.0.1. So it's very, very early, early. Every ages. And I will show you more or less how it works. I will do a demo right now to show you how it works. Uh, okay, can you see the screen? Yeah, more or less. It can be a little bit bigger. Okay, I have a repo here. Okay, I'm in a repo. Uh, status. Oh, in this case, there are some. Well, uh, well it, this is a repo. Okay, uh, it's very, well, basically the, with some files inside, some secrets in this case. Uh, I will show you one file, for instance, a secret seven. This is a, a, a bar that contains a secret. We have also in secret eight, this one. We have also uh, five, six, another one, and we have an, this one. So we have some secrets in some files, okay? Does, uh, if, if basically Git secret is a model that it's integrated into, into Git, so you can use it as Git with, uh, using Git, Git secret, okay. Uh, uh, okay, it should, okay. This is basically the help. In this case, 
You can do config to manage a configuration on your settings of your Git secret in this repo or globally. You can apply everything you can do, you do in a repo, you can also do it globally, okay? Rules, it's to manage the rules you want to enable in the, to be verified in this, in this repo. Check is basically to make the inspection. Uh, and hook is, the, is one of the last things I implemented. It's something that, that uh, enables some hooks into the Git. So you can, for instance, uh, enable a hook that verifies if a commit has a secret before doing the commit. Okay, so the commit, it's, not, it's blocked, it's not done. Okay, I will show you some example. In this case, I need to do the git secret uh, config init, okay, to create the initial configuration for this repo, okay. And now with these secret rules, um, we, we can see all the rules I have right now. We have some rules. There are only, th these are not very well designed rules, are only examples I am using for, for basically to, to test it and all those things. But we have, for instance, one rule that works very good. The, this, those two rules to detect Amazon keys and in repos works very good because the Amazon tokens are very, very specific in length and, and char set, okay? But, and there are also others like certificates, uh, RSA, um, and PCP or RSA, or um, even passwords. So what the first thing I ha we have to do is to enable the rules we want to have in this repo, okay? It's basically with good secret rules enable. Uh, for, for instance, that we are going to enable the third, all the thirds. You can use wildcards here, okay, as you see. And I, I enabled all of this. And right now, we can make a check. Well, let's see if there is any of this uh, check. Okay, in the check, you can basically, uh, do, 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 do. oh, okay. When, when, doing, when doing a check, you can choose in where you want to do the check. If you want to do in commits, in the last, and commits, or if you want to do on the staged files that are not uh, that are already not committed, okay, you can do both, even both together. I mean, we are going to see if there are some uh, secrets on the last uh, ten commits in this case, okay, and we see that there are a lot of secrets. Here we can see the file. Uh, here we can see some metadata like the commit in which the secret is, uh, the object ID, which is an internal object. ID used by by the Git by Git, the rule that match it and the content in this case. Okay, you can see that this file it's the same because we enabled only the certificate stuff. Uh, it's the same file but in in different versions of, in different commits. I mean different versions of the commit. Okay, in this case, uh, this is something I need to fix. I need to fix that because uh, all the files are, are, are exactly the same. The unique idea is the same. So I need to consolidate this uh, output somehow to make it uh, more readable and better. But it's something that uh, it's, it's work in progress, <laughs> okay? Then, another, what you probably want to do is to um, somehow to prevent to commit uh, secrets. Because right now, if I, do, if, I'm, if I do that, for instance, I create a, a one in this case, I will, uh, I think I have an uh, example. Example third, I copy this certificate here, okay? And I'm gonna make uh, git add uh, example third. Git commit um, uh, add new file. Oh, in, the case, in this case I, I have the, okay. <laughs> As you can see I have, an, I have the hook enabled. It's supposed to be disabled, but it's enabled because I did the test this morning and I enabled it and, and I don't need to disable. But as you can see the commit is not happening right now because it phones uh, secrets on the, on, the, on the staged files in this case. Okay, I'm going to disable the, the, the hook. One second. Uh, all this hook things, it's, it's something that it's super new right now. So it's uh, probably it's not working everything. I will try to disable the, the hook to see if it works. Now I can do the commit, yeah, okay. With this I disable the hooks. 
so the commit it's it's uh, can be proceed. And I, if I enable again the hooks, uh, and I'm trying I don't know example example two. Git at example two. And I'm trying to commit right now. It should fail. Well, it failed. The commit cannot proceed. And that's something that prevents you from uh, committing uh, secrets in your own uh, repos, okay? But of course, this is something that it's in your own. I mean, you have to use it. If you don't use it, at some point, the repo will, will be an, on, on GitHub or even on, on... So there is another use case, which is basically uh, to integrate this also with GitHub Enterprise. To continuously review all the repos within, um, within uh, the GitHub Enterprise. For instance, uh, or the first of, we, we already um, have nothing done about this, but we are more or less thinking on this. Uh, our first approach was, okay, we can use the scheduler jobs to daily review all the repos and blah, blah, blah. But seems that the last version of GitHub Enterprise that was released some months ago or something like this uh, has something that it's called server hooks, where you can trigger things from the server. Okay, it's something that we need to investigate uh, to see what it's exactly server hooks. We don't know right now, but it's something that we can probably use uh, if someone make a push. Then uh, you can evaluate uh, the the commit, and I don't know if after or before the commit, the push already happened. Uh, so we need, we need to investigate what these hooks are, uh, allows us to do, okay? And then another interesting thing, another important thing is that, of course, uh, if there are some, a lot of false positives and you need some way to manage this for your own repo, if you have a repo and you push the, the content to our GitHub Enterprise and you are getting, getting a lot of notifications that are not real, at some point you will ignore all the notifications. So we need a way to indicate this false positive. So our idea, basically, our first idea is to have a secret YAML file in, 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 the, same re in, the, in the repo itself. I mean, if you have this, this YAML file in the repo itself, when the secret is going to evaluate it, it will use it as an um, exception file. Okay? And this is basically I want to, what I wanted to present you, basically, because we're in, con in the context of secret management and all those things. And I did this short presentation. It is, well, it's done. <laughs> and if you have any question or whatever, just shoot me. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I can show you. Uh, we can go, to, for instance, to, the, to GitHub. Right now, it's on the on the same repo, on the same repo in which I have the library. We have uh, the rules. Okay. At some point, I will put it in a specific repo or something like this because uh, it's, it's something that has its own entity. But it's very simple. Here, for instance, the Amazon rules it's, are very simple. Basically, basically this, and and I don't know the um, uh, certificates rules for. Uh, there are, there are this for generic, for PGP, for RSA. So it's 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 very simple. It's very easy and very easy to to create new ones. I was thinking about because uh, this uh, rules uh, stuff, it's something that it's, uh, you can do it as complex as you want. I mean, you can do at complexity or not. But for instance, I don't know if you are aware about Yara, Yara rules. 
the error rules are basically something that it's, very, it's commonly used in the malware, um, it's to detect malware. Okay, and it's based on not only on regular expressions, but it's also it's a, it's a kind of, um, so you can combine regular expression with ands, ors, and not only regular expressions, also other stuff. So it's, you can, it's a, like a, a kind of a meta language that has regular expressions and other things, and you combine them with ands, ors, and some logical operators. And, and this is something that it's one of the things that I was looking into as well to see if, uh, if, where would the, if, if, if mm, basically fits with the, my needs here. Okay? But I, I will take a look on the, how it's called? Rock? Uh, rock. Rock. Okay, I will, I will take a look. Yara. Yara. It's, yeah. it's Yara. And you can see Yara rules, for instance, are, are rules to detect malware and, and indicators of compromise as well. Any other question, suggestion? Basically, this is open source. You can, you can it's in, it's in, basically, it's in GitHub. 90% uh, of this was code in my holidays uh, in, in one week, so don't expect to be <laughs> Uh, very, I mean, it's something that it's, uh, I'm, I'm doing that for fun, so <laughs> don't shoot me bullets. <laughs> and contributions are welcome, of course. And that's all. More questions? So we can, we have some food there, and beers, and coke, water. We can go there then.